If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. Another thing we've got to get rid of from our life is impatience. Patience is the greatest virtue of love. According to 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, bears all things. Impatience is the greatest opposite of that. Impatience is what ultimately makes us burst out in anger. We must ask God to give us a control over ourselves so that we can, the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Because many things we are impatient about do not have eternal consequences. Stop and ask yourself, 2,000 years from now, is it going to make that much of a difference if this thing is not done as quickly as I think it should be done? You know, we can get worked up in our spirit with impatience. It could be with our children, it could be with a servant at home, it could be with our neighbor who is creating problems, or it could be with somebody at work. Or, I mean, we're surrounded by opportunities to get impatient. You can get impatient on the road when the traffic is blocked for a long time and somebody cuts in between and squeezes in here and there and almost starts an accident. Impatience, we are surrounded every day by opportunities to be impatient. And you've got to say, Lord, fill me with the spirit of patience, long-suffering. Lord, give me the spirit of long-suffering with self, L-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-N-G, suffering. That type of long-suffering. Uh, Lord, give me that. Give me that. Only you can do it. The fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering. Please give me that. I don't have it within me. The children of Adam are not patient. I believe that one of the marks of spiritual growth that even your children will see is patience. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, a good man is kind even to his animals. But when a man gets born again, even his animals recognize it. It's an amazing verse that uh, even animals can recognize, hey, something happens to my master. He's not so impatient like he was yesterday. Animal, a bullock, a donkey. So, I believe your children will certainly recognize it if God has done a work in your heart. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit and with a genuine experience, you won't just speak in tongues. You'll become more patient. So, but we've got to work at it. Add to your, these virtues, this one also, to be, if, if you overcome impatience, you'll be able to overcome anger. Because a lot of anger comes up because of built-in impatience, and then the pressure cooker explodes. And it's on the roof and everywhere else. So make sure the safety valve is working, and the steam is let out at regular intervals, so that it doesn't explode and harm other people. Okay, we go to number 12. Number 12, another bad habit we've got to flee from is indiscipline. I'm very sorry to say that today's generation, young generation, is a very indisciplined generation. They're indisciplined in the use of money, they're indisciplined in their study habits, they are indisciplined in functionality, they are indisciplined in keeping things tidy, cleanliness, orderliness in their lives. And you know, the Bible says that God has given us the spirit of discipline. We must be disciplined in our eating habits, for example. It's very sad that a younger generation is growing up that does not know how to fast and pray. They know how to feast. The younger generation knows which are the best restaurants for food, but they don't know how to fast. And you won't be spiritual till you've learned to discipline your bodily habits. You learn to discipline to fast. I know the body craves for food, but I would encourage you to develop the habit of fasting. I suggested some time ago the people, try and fast from giving your opinions about people for one week. Just for one week. You want to give your opinion? You put your hand in your mouth, no, I'm fasting. I'm not supposed to say anything about anybody for one week. 
you see what a struggle it is to be disciplined about just yeah so many people are talking about trying to and you got no opinion to give you got plenty in your head but you're not going to you're fasting just try it for one week and you'll be so blessed by it you'll probably want to make it a permanent fast from giving your opinions because your opinion is not all that valuable and good to remember that but fasting from food and uh, overcoming the lust to eat especially if any of you want to be useful in the lord's service i would encourage you to discipline your bodily habits because the apostle paul said in 1 corinthians 9 i discipline my body making it do the last few verses making it do what it should do not what it wants to do making it do what it should do that's the living bible not what it wants to do let otherwise i will preach to others and finally be rejected myself i remember as a young man i was working in the navy and i felt the lord may call me for a service so i decided to discipline myself while i was working on the ship i would sometimes fast for two days just live on liquid and do my job mainly because i love food like everybody else and i decided i've got to conquer this if i want to serve the lord I mean I may be in some situation somewhere where I don't get food then what do I do if I'm a slave to food I'll be finished I've got to conquer it before I come out to serve the Lord so I would do it on a regular basis now and then skip meals for two days and just live on juices or milk or something only liquid and then I would learn to sleep on hard floors without a mattress so that I could be tough I can do it even today don't if you love a comfortable life I'm not saying you should sleep on the floor if you got a mattress but you must learn to be happy to sleep on the floor if you don't have a mattress and the only way to do it is to try it out sometime when you have a mattress see whether you can sleep on the floor you know if you really I'm talking about if you really want to serve the lord I mean if you're one of those people who's aim in life is to be some business executive you're going to retire like that I'm not talking to you and I'm talking about people who really want to serve the lord maybe go to some difficult places to serve the lord some remote villages perhaps you won't get those comforts there which uh, you get everywhere else so you got to be disciplined discipline your body and i believe that if you discipline your time and study habits many of you would have known the bible much more than you know it today discipline yourself to listen to some good bible study material on cd's or tapes and to read books that speak to your heart I did that to read missionary biographies and books that challenged my heart and those days if I had CDs in those days we never had CDs in those days I would have listened to anything that would help me to know the bible much better so I believe that God can use many of you if you will discipline yourself to study and uh, you know life can be much easier for other people in your home if you're orderly in the way you keep your things and people will remember it and it's a very good testimony uh, i remember as a young man i visited a home i was in the navy and i was and gone somewhere preaching i was just 24 years old 25 years old and um, i was staying in, in a home for two or three days we had meetings and then i came back to work years later about 30 40 years later that brother that brother had died his daughter who was much grown up now but she was a little child there in those days when i used to visit that home and she said the thing her mother told her was uh, that brother jack would always fold his uh, bed and bed sheet and mattress neatly and they forgot all my sermons that's the only thing they remembered years later and i just want to tell you that it's not all the wonderful things you say that people will remember if you stay in a house they'll see how you kept the room when you left it that will remember they'll remember all their life it's a good testimony as a christian do you know that when jesus rose up from the dead he folded the napkin and kept it there did he ask one of the angels to do that no i don't think so jesus rose up from the dead you read that in the gospel the disciples saw the napkin folded and kept there who who folded that jesus got up 
and went out of the grave. Imagine, after the resurrection, just making sure that the napkin is folded. Boy, what an example for us who haven't yet got to the resurrection. We should definitely do it before we get there. That means that was the habit of Jesus' life from childhood. And the habits that you have from childhood, you'll have even after your resurrection. Great. I want to be like that. That's what it means to follow Jesus. It's not just walking on the water and raising the dead. Let's start with folding the napkin. You'll come to raising the dead and all a little later.